guys, it's Bioman, and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Last time, we did the whole tutorial level, the Endar Spire, and now we are going to be on Terrace and starting the first actual world of the game. Right, you alien scum. Everybody, get up against the wall. This is a raid. <laughs> That's how we sit deep with smart mouth aliens. Now the rest of you get up against the wall before I lose my temper again. What's this? Humans hiding out with aliens? They're Republic fugitives! Attack! You actually notice here I'm actually using the normal attack, not the power attack. And the reason for that is that the power attack is actually not very accurate. And whenever I'm using something like two weapons, I want to make sure that I'm accurate. <laughs> Alrighty, and with that said, we're going to level up here, and we are going to, for our skills, put, just put one in Treat Injury. I was going to try to put one in Persuade, but I can't because... Uh, that's not a class skill, and actually costs two points to put one in there and not just one point. So I'm just going to put it in Treat Injury. For feats, I'm going to put in Flurry, which allows me to attack more times. Uh, or one more time, to be exact. So I'm actually hitting three times per turn. Instead of just the two for two weapons. Now we're, uh, after checking all of these uh, bodies here, getting some weapons, some grenades... Um, and some stim packs or whatever the heck they're called, we're going to be bashing into this room. You can actually bash doors in this game. It takes a while, like more than security, but if your security skills aren't high enough or you don't have someone who's able to do that, you can just bust right into the room. Who are you? What are you doing in here? You can't just come barging into someone's home. That's no excuse. You can't just go around barging into people's apartments because you're curious. But at least you're more polite than that pig, Holden. Just one of Darvik's men who can't keep his hands to himself. But all he got for his trouble was a nasty scar from my vibroblade. Too bad I'm the one still paying the price. I, I don't want to talk about it. I'm in enough trouble already. Besides, I don't know if I can trust you. Well, I suppose you seem like an alright sort. When I cut Holden, it made him back off, but it also embarrassed him in front of his friends. Holden's a spiteful little hut slug. He went and put out a bounty on my head for what I did. That's why I'm hiding out here. I doubt it. Holden is one of Darvik's men. When you work for the local crime lord, the authorities tend to turn a blind eye. I'm afraid this is between me and Holden now. Could try, I guess. He usually hangs out at the cantina in the lower city. It probably won't do any good. Holden's used to getting his own way. That's one of the fringe benefits of being a goon for Darvik. Working for the local crime lord lets you get away with things. Still, I appreciate the offer. Goodbye and good luck. I hope you can talk some sense into Holden. You'll notice in that conversation there was one uh, actual conversation option that said persuade before it. It's actually a skill check. You can actually, <clears throat> if your skill is high enough in persuade. <laughs> And I can tell you from experience that they aren't any good at all against a simple vibroblade. That's why the Republic has been training soldiers in hand-to-hand -hand and melee combat. 
Rachikun Idahodonga, Ikinkuno Bamulerachikun, Slimo Podona, Tong Abu Shaumina, Wonga Kumbis King Balemura. Achuta, Wonga Kumbis Dun. Anyway, like I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by this tailhead. Um, the uh, if your skill is high enough, you can actually proceed through another conversation uh, tree branch. And if not, if it's too low, then most of the time you'll just get shut out of the conversation entirely. Here, we're actually not going to buy the combat suit. We're actually, or I'm sorry, we're not going to buy the energy shield. We're just going to buy a combat suit because the energy shield costs too much and it's not very useful against enemies with. Uh, weapons that aren't energy based, so like vibro blades, vibro axes, stuff like that. And here, like I was saying about bashing, uh, it's quicker to use security, and whenever you're using, like, whenever you're opening a box or another container, you never want to bash it because bashing it actually gives you a chance of ruining whatever's inside, and that doesn't happen when you use security. Uh, security as a skill to open a door actually also is a skill check. Um, sometimes whenever, like, since it follows, uh, like I said last part, since it follows the same rules as the actual pen and paper RPG, if your die roll is low enough on security, sometimes uh -huh. you can even, like, set off an alarm or something. If it's really right. low and you're in a certain situation, it yes. allows for it. Normally, though, if it's just too low, it'll say yeah. just, like, failure and you can't open it. Um, you can try it again if you use a skill check because... Skill checks are part actual skill level and part a die roll, you know, because basically your skill level uh, equates to an add-on that you add on to like a d20 roll or something like that. If you don't know a lot about the whole uh, pen and paper RPG deal, if you're not very well versed in that, um, basically the whole deal with the d20 is that, well, if I say d anything, that means it's that many sided die. So if I say d20, that means a 20 sided die. If I say d4... That's a four-sided die. And if I say a number before the D, that means how many dice there are. So, like, 2D6 is a, you know, it's when you roll two six-sided dies. And uh, that will give you a result. And then there would either be a multiplier that you multiply that by or, like, an add-on that, uh, you, that you would add on to it, obviously. And that would come from, like, a skill or something like that. So there's your quick little introduction to pen and paper RPG mechanics. Everything that this game does in, like, combat or skill checks or whatever, it's all based on the Star Wars pen and paper RPG, which I think is pretty awesome. Here, uh, we're just going through some quests here. We're about to open up a new side quest. This time it's going to be a class quest with Karth. Um, you'll notice we're going to start talking to him, learn more about his past. Yes, what's in your mind? Me? Well, I've been a star pilot for the Republic for years. Same war my shoe, of course. I fought in the Mandalorian Wars before all this started. But with all that, I've never experienced anything like the slaughter of these Sith animals could unleash. Not even the Mandalorians were that senseless. My home world was one of the first planets to fall to Malak's fate. The Sith bombed it into submission, and there wasn't a damn thing our Republic forces could do to stop them. I'm just a soldier. I go where the fleet admirals tell me to. I follow my orders and I do my duty. It, it's just... It doesn't seem right that doing that means that I failed. I, I didn't. Yeah, no, I... That's not what I mean. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm not making much sense. You probably mean well with your questions. I'm just not accustomed to talking about my past very much. At all, actually. I'm more used to taking action. Keeping my mind focused on the business at hand. So let's just do that. If you have more questions, Ask them later. Karth is really at this point a, I don't know, I don't want to say he's sort of an archetype, but he kind of is. You know, he's the guy that basically is trying desperately to let go of his past, but he just can't, you know. And, you know, there's not really much you can do. And it's kind of sad, but, you know, whatever. We'll learn more about later. Hello there. I haven't seen you in my shop before. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kepler Yurt. Welcome to the Equipment Emporium. You looking to buy some supplies? My shop's the largest one in all of Upper Terrace. Best selection on the planet. Whatever you need, I've got. 
Well, mostly. Mostly? What do you mean by that? The Sith confiscated all my heavy weapons, and they impounded all my ships and swoop bikes. But I've still got a real nice selection, if you're interested. Uh, just so you know, the prices on the items are our final. No bargaining here. This isn't a swap meet, okay? I only deal in top-notch stuff. Okay, so here we're actually only going to buy uh, one particular item, and that's a Primacry Detonator. Now, why? Because, first of all, we have the credits, and it's going to be essential to a uh, side quest that we're going to do later. Um, so, it's only 50 credits. You should have enough at this point to buy it. And we can use that later for a side quest. Now we're going to head over to the... Uh, uh, what's the word? The, the cantina. Uh, there's a Sith guard out here, but he's not anything important, so we don't have to deal with him. Basically, because even though we're holding... Me, I'm here on official Sith business. Anyway, even though we're holding two giant swords, he's not going to care, and he's not going to do anything. You know, it's not like the security on terrorists or anything. No, not at all. But whatever. He's probably just paid to stand there and say he's on official Sith business. Don't you just love watching the Pazak players? All that strategy, all those credits, it's enough to make a girl get all flushed. Is that an innuendo for something? What do you want? Have you come here just to bother me, or do you wish to test yourself against the best Pazak player on Taurus? <laughs> you don't even have your own deck? Then why are you bothering me? You can't play Pazak without your own deck. If you're serious about Pazak, go speak to old Garok on the other side of the tavern. His gambling days are over, and uh, he's looking to sell his deck. All right, here we're actually not going to buy it. Uh, Hello there, youngster. You interested in buying the Pazak deck of an old man looking to get out of the gambling game? Just 50 credits, and I'll sell you all my cards. I'll even throw in a free lesson to boot. It's a great deal, if you can afford it. No, of course, of course. No sense in a youngster like you wasting your days away with an old man in a dingy bar. But if you ever want to chat, you know where to find me. Like I was saying, we're not going to buy the deck at this point because one, we don't have the credits, and two, it's not really worth it. It's just a pointless mini game. Yeah, I'm just uh, circling the area to get vision on everything here on the mini map. No hard feelings, my good man, but I can't really talk with you right now. It's difficult enough to draw the interest of the ladies in this establishment as it is. Surely you understand what I'm talking about. I guess you've experienced many lonely evenings. Something I'm hoping to avoid tonight. Well then, okay. Um, okay, a little jerk there, but whatever. Um, it's a pointless little minigame, the whole Pazak thing. Sorry, but I'm not here looking for conversation. I just came to get a drink, listen to some music, and try to relax before my next shift at the military base. I don't wear my uniform when I'm off duty. It's not allowed. In fact, anyone in uniform is banned from entering the cantina. The officers don't like it when we show up here off duty. Don't like us fraternizing with the locals, I guess. But it gets pretty stale hanging out around the base all the time. Besides, the Sith don't own me. Being a soldier in their fleet is just a job, you know? A job with long hours and low pay, I might have. When I signed up, I was promised adventure and excitement in exotic locales. Instead, I ended up stationed at a military base on some backwater planet on the fringes of the galaxy. If I could just find some other way to earn some credits, I could give up this lousy job. Retire my uniform, so to speak. Oh, okay. I'll see you around. Say, do me a favor and don't repeat all the stuff I just told you, eh? Might not go over well with superiors. When playing Pazak, uh, it's just a gamble for whether you win or lose credits, and it's not worth it. It's not worth the time. Hi there. I haven't seen you around before. Of course, they don't give us Sith officers from the military base much time off. I'm off duty right now, so I'm not in uniform. My name is Sana, junior officer, first class with the Sith occupation force. I'm actually a little surprised you're talking to me at all. Most of the people here on Taras can't stand us Sith. You can make this job pretty good anyway. Save the sympathetic best friend act. I'm not buying it. But I don't want to fill out a bunch of paperwork on my day off, so let's just pretend this conversation never happened. Now move along. Well then, remember I was talking about how, like, you get shut out of the conversation? It's like that. I can't believe we couldn't get arena tickets for this match. Now we'll have to watch the duel on the view screen. Who cares? It's Duncan and Gurlon fighting. 
It's not like we're gonna miss anything good. Shh, they're about to start, so quit complaining and just watch the view screen. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the dueling ring. Here, two combatants will battle for your viewing and gambling enjoyment. Now, I hope all your bets are down because we're ready to roll. In this corner, I give you Gerlon Tuzinger. And over here, looking to climb the ranks yet again, is the ever-persistent Deadeye Duncan. Oh, Duncan. He just drops his gun, like, in the middle of the fight. I haven't seen you around here before. You looking to step into the duel ring? Or did you just come to watch? Good to see some new blood in the fight game. Things have gotten pretty stale around here lately. If you're serious about this, go talk to Azure the Hut. He's the duel organizer. He'll probably start a rookie like you out against Duncan. But, yeah. This is what we're gonna do. Fibro blades and blasters, and nobody ever dies. How come I get the feeling you're trying to take us for a ride? Now I'm going to butt in here, just sort of, because I don't really have time to conclude this episode. We could use those credits from these duels, but using your real name is too risky. The Sith might have come across a crew manifest back on Andor Spire. Anyway, because I'm really able to interrupt this guy because he's not even speaking English, but whatever. Uh, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Once again, thanks to Yaosh Alliance for allowing me to do this and you know to upload my video to their channel. If you want to check out my own channel and subscribe to that, you can see uh, more Let's Plays like this. I want to thank you all very much for watching. My name is Bioman, and I'll see you all next time.
Thank you.